So we're about to do our very first Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth draft here during the Early Access event, thanks to Wizards of the Coast for inviting me to it. I always love playing the new limited format, you know, right when it's brand, brand new. Uh, also, Card Kingdom, as usual, sponsors all my stuff. If you want cards that you're going to see in this video, you can get them all at Card Kingdom. You go to cardkingdom.com slash needs a hone, or click on the link in the description if you're watching on YouTube, or the link uh, below if you're watching on Twitch. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I do think Battle of Bywater is pretty good. You kind of have to build around it a little because, you know, you don't want it to destroy your creatures. Um, so it's interesting. It takes some work, whereas something like Bitter Downfall doesn't take any. Like, it's just a great removal spell. Um, so I'm a little tempted to take it. I also think Gollum is pretty good. Um, you know, probably in the realm of first pickable. We've also got Claim the Precious. So there's two really good black removal spells here, which is a little uh awkward in terms of you know what one takes here um i'm sort of leaning towards battle of bywater i mean this is an early access draft it's my first draft taking rares and seeing how they play you know and figuring that out is always a good idea because i'm gonna have lots of chances to play with the rest of these so i think it's comparable enough that i'm just gonna take the battle of bywater you know three mana to kill a bunch of big creatures isn't too bad all right, this pack's pretty strong. So we've got Shire Sheriff, something that doesn't, <coughs> excuse me, die to the Battle of Bywater. We've also got Glowin, who's pretty good, um, you know, makes treasure, goads things, which we don't get to do in Limited very often, but uh, <laughs> we do have goad. I'm leaning a little towards the Sheriff. Um, it's a great removal spell, but this is also another rare, one could argue. It's also one that doesn't go particularly well at the Battle of Bywater. And I do think the Sheriff is great. You know, as long as you have a token, it becomes a Banisher Priest. And there are a lot of tokens. So, yeah, Goad, Goad can be pretty sweet, I think. I'll go ahead and take Shire Sheriff here. Another Shire Sheriff. So I'm going to really want some tokens if I take that. And I think I probably do. Um, yeah. It's probably just the best card in this pack, frankly. I don't think... You know, these days, most signposts and commons are pretty good. I don't think this one is. I think it's pretty close to unplayable. Um, so, yeah. And Shire Sheriff is great. You know, right now we do have the ability to make food at least, but we're going to want um, more tokens. Yeah, one thing I think they did that's cool in this set is they designed a bunch of white cards, and I guess there's a few black ones too, that interact with any kind of token, which is nice. Um like Shire Sheriff, where it can be a food, it can be a 1-1 human, it can be a treasure, uh, it can be an army, you know. So, and this format has a lot of tokens, so it ends up it ends up working out. No, yeah, that pack was not especially good. But I don't hate that we've managed to stay white, and I think we have three really powerful white cards to start with. Um, gonna need some more token makers. I mean, green-white is the food deck... So, you know, I don't think this rare is particularly good. Um, in fact, I think it's probably very difficult to make it work. I mean, it's like, you know, near the end of the format and you want a sweet control deck win condition. It doesn't seem terrible, but uh, yeah. So March for Black Gate is interesting, but I do sort of feel like ideally you're in like black red to make it really work to do its best job because it wants you to attack with armies. I'm kind of leaning towards Mordor Muster. You know, it makes you an army that works with our Shire Sheriff, draws us a card. I think I like that. I don't hate the Torment of Gollum either, but I do think Mordor, Mordor Muster is a little better. Plus, it makes sure we have an early token for our Sheriffs. So Black-White is like a legendary slash Tempted by the Ring deck, which... Wow, that's a pretty late Samwise. I will definitely take that. Um... Yeah, definitely the best card in this pack. White is very open, and I'm liking it. So this tempts us with the ring. It doesn't give us any counters or anything, tokens rather, but, uh, you know, he's um, small. <laughs> so that works with Battle of Bywater. Yeah, the trebuchet is pretty cool. You do have to basically be in black-red to make it work, but, you know, other than that, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I would love to get Bill the Pony. Hmm. Oh, 
Okay, so this is pretty good too. Um, you know, I wasn't sure black would be our second color, but I think shadow summoning is good enough that we definitely want it over like orcish medicine, which does make a token, but you know, I don't think it's that good for the most part. It's like a lot worse than Mordor Muster. Uh, Stalwarts of Us Gilead is okay. Doesn't fit super well for trying to stay small. You know, I'm not going to try to have no cards that Battle of Bywater kills. Right now we're doing it, which is nice. But, you know, eventually we are going to have to take some things that die uh, <laughs> to Battle of Bywater. But if most of our deck doesn't die to it, it's very likely to help us and hurt our opponent. So... So this is the first pack pick where I'm not super pumped about anything. Um, we're not. We might have some humans for the Dunedain Blade. Um, this mass pump isn't going to be that good. I mean, I guess we have Shadow Summoning. Hmm. I guess we could end up with enough tokens. I don't really like Slip on the Ring. Um, we do have a few ETBs right now, or at least one. Yeah, I may just take the Blade. Right now, it's. Not very good in our deck. Um, but it might end up being good. And yeah, the mass pump effect is kind of in the same neighborhood. Okay, so now we are going to take a card that will die to the Battle of Bywater. But it's a pretty good one, I think. You know, you play this. Oftentimes, you can attack and give a thing flying right away. And then after that, it can just bring something into the sky with it. So it's good enough that we, we take it even though it dies to Battle of Bywater. So, Protector of Gondor is not bad. Nimble Hobbit's okay. I think the Protector is a better card overall. It's just, and it gives us a token. But, yeah, I think we'll take it. I guess I'm not still 100% on whether or not black's going to happen. So, if you blink your ring bearer, it just starts over. I mean, it doesn't really do anything <laughs> because, well, it depends on the order on that card, I guess. Maybe it does do something. Okay, so these are all pretty good. Um, I'm not going to be sacking things. Um, I think we take Easterling Vanguard. Um, it, it blinks your creature and then the ring tempts you, right? So if you do that, I mean, your ring bearer blinks and then the ring tempts you and you can just make it the ring bearer again. So it doesn't really do anything. Remember, you don't start over every time. Uh... Yeah. I think Barrel Blade's actually pretty reasonable, and I guess if we don't end up in a world of having enough humans for Dunedine Blade, it's not a bad substitute. I think this thing's going to be fine in, like, a blue-white deck, but that's not where we are. We'd have one card that draws us cards, I guess. I mean, I think it's a lot more likely Barrel Blade makes the cut than it is anything else. There are... There's at least one human payoff in white. Now we'll take Now for Wrath, Now for Ruin. One equipment payoff in white, I mean. Um, so, I don't think Escape for or from Orthonk is terrible. I mean, it may not make the cut, but... Well, this is interesting. You know, this is a card I've been interested to play with because it's hard to get a feel on. Like, the fact that it doesn't do anything... You know, it draws you two cards is what it does. Um, but it does it slowly... Like, I don't love that. Is there anything in this pack I really want more? Not really. So I think I'm going to try out where the Last Alliance here. First draft of the format. Yeah, you just have to get tempted four times throughout the game, and then you have it fully unlocked. You don't have to start over every time. The Torment of Gollum is nice, but I do think we're going to try out this saga that I think it's hard to get a feel for overall. Um... If the format's really fast, it's not going to be very good. Ooh. So Denethor is pretty good, and now we do have a reason to start sacking things. I also like Mirkwood Bats, um, and we do like tokens. But I think Denethor is a little bit better than Mirkwood Bats. But this is a strong common. Uh, yeah, it's definitely what we're going to take. Denethor likes tokens, too. He's just different about it. Right now, those Sheriffs are looking pretty good. We have a lot of ways to make tokens. We got our spirit tokens. We have one one humans. We've got some food. We have some armies. I think the deck's looking pretty good so far. Although I will say, I think literally every time, you know, 
I can't remember every early access event, but I feel like the first deck in every early access event hasn't done that well. <laughs> then the second one tends to do well. That's been the pattern so far. That has been the pattern so far. But this deck feels pretty good so far. There is colorless fixing. It's not great, but it's there. Um, I mean, there are lands. The best colorless fixing is the Evolving Wilds variant. You know, it's not exactly Evolving Wilds, but it's similar. So I think Faramir is quite good. Um, he does die, of course, to Battle of Bywater, but he might be worth taking anyway. I do like Shadow Summoning a lot. I wouldn't hate a second one. But I think Faramir is probably enough better that I'm going to take it over Shadow Summoning. This is more likely to wheel, too. Yeah, I mean, the 03 Defender that fixes isn't very good. I mean, it, it can do it. There's Wizard's Rockets. It's not very good. There's the Manalith variant that tempts you by the ring, and it's not that good either. Like, you can play them, and if you really have something powerful to splash, it's worth doing. But you're not always going to be able to make it work. Here's the land I was talking about. So I take Mirkwood Bats now, I think. Um, Haunt of the Dead Marshes does get interesting when we have Denethor. Um... It's a pretty good combo. Obviously, you need four mana every turn to really make it do its thing, but that's pretty cool. But yeah, I think we take a Mirkwood Bats here. Doesn't die to Battle of Bywater, and that's a good uh, good tiebreaker. Yeah, yep, yep. Ooh, this likes tokens too. So she's another one of these cards that she makes food, but she cares about all tokens. So that works for us. Um, yeah, definitely the best card here. Yeah, she's really strong. Um, you know, three mana, one, one, get a food, put a counter somewhere. I mean, I think especially I think there's like a five color green deck in the format. Green has some really good fixing, uh, but if you're not green, it does get trickier. But yeah, if you're green slash anything, splashing a third color seems almost trivial. This is a pretty cool uh, design, but I don't think it's very good. But I, I love what they did with the card. Um, so we've got Eastmark Cavalier. We have Esquire of the King, which we have a decent number of legendaries, and we're going reasonably wide, I guess. Yeah, I might take Esquire. I don't... The Nimble Hobbit is a little disappointing. Right now, you know, it only cares about food, and right now we're not actually that good at food, so I don't really think I want it. I think I'd rather have the Esquire. So we got Two Reaper, which uh, is a Ring Tempts Us thing. I want Nimble Hobbit now. I mean, I think there's a decent chance Nimble Hobbit ends up working out. The Berserker's not bad either. But right now, I don't feel great about it. But it's probably a little better than the Reaper. Frodo Baggins, huh? He's pretty good, but obviously we can't play him. Um, yeah, this pack doesn't really have anything for us. I guess I'll take a Dunedine Blade. At least cutting white might make someone else not draft white. All right, we'll take a Stalwarts. First pack went really well. I feel less good about pack two, but that may mean pack three will go really well. I think we take the Cavalier over Second Breakfast. Second Breakfast does give us food, but it's... It's kind of a medium trick. All right, I think... I think I want another Esquire of the King. I don't hate Soldier of the Grey Host. He's doing it kind of worse in multiples, but... It's interesting there's not a legendary counter. That would be convenient. Um, one, two, three. We're just at four right now, plus everything that has the Ring Tempt Us also counts. Well, I could get three of them, which I'm not sure I want to play that many of. I 
Yeah, more tokens would be good. We do have a lot already. More than enough to support Shire Sheriff, but more would be cool. These are kind of colorless fixing, I guess. All of the, the land cyclers. Okay. Nasty End is interesting. We do have a lot of legendaries plus ring bearers, so it's kind of on my radar. Haunt of the Dead Marshes is too, but apart from our Denethor combo, it doesn't do that much. Maybe I just want like a Westfold Rider. Do I think it's better than the Reaper? I mean, probably. I like having a mainboard disenchant effect that doesn't cost me anything. If I had two Denethors, I think I'd be in on Haunt of Dead Marshes, but I mean, yeah, I think I'd rather have the Westfold Rider. Here's another Faramir. Here's another Haunt. Kind of thinking Gollum is where I want to go, though. Yeah, he's pretty good. I mean, just a two mana three one with pretty big upside is where I want to be. Um, yeah. Gives us another sack outlet that makes Haunt of Dead Marshes interesting. There's another Landraval. I don't know how much I want a second one. I don't think Banish from Eterus is that good, but we're not doing great on removal. So maybe it is something I need to consider here, especially because the other stuff's not amazing. Yeah, I will take Banish. Don't love it, but when you have no removal at this point, it kind of moves up in your pick order. Well, black-white is... It's kind of a bunch of things. It's like tokens, but it's also legendary slash um, ring tempts you stuff. It has a lot going on, but it's kind of all of those. So here's another medium removal spell. Um, I also like Errand Rider of Gondor, a reasonable amount. Ooh, I probably just want Minas Tirith. Yeah, it's a really good land. Drawing cards with your lands is always nice. Yeah, I think we take it over these. This is removal, but it's not so good that I feel terrible about... Taking Minas Tirith. Okay, I like Reprieve. We have definitely are making less tokens. You know, at the beginning it looked like we'd have every token in the world, and now, you know, we still have enough for our token payoffs, but not so many that it's like amazing either. I guess Shire Sheriff is removal. I sort of forgot about that, but at the same time, it's not like permanent removal like Banish. We'd have a lot of four drops, which I don't love. Um, there's another Reprieve. This is really bad removal that I mostly think isn't playable, so I'm not going to take it. Um, doesn't really remove the creature in any way, shape, or form, unless your opponent lets it, basically. So there's another Reprieve. I like the Errand Rider, but I also like Reprieve. I think I'm just going to take another one. White Remand. Okay, so I think we'll take another Westfold Rider here. We definitely don't have enough uh, humans for Dunedain Blade. Probably not going to play Barrow Blade in the end or Escape from Orthanc. Or Thank? I don't know. People be correct in my pronunciation. I mean, you know, I've seen the movies, I've read the books, but it's been a while. I should have watched it again to uh, remind myself how everything's pronounced. <laughs> I feel like I pronounce all the big things correctly, like people's names. But when it comes to things, locations, not so much. Not so much. Wow, that's... Strider's real good. Someone's going to be happy with that. Um, yeah, no, I don't think we want that. Probably don't play the soldiers in the end. Don't really feel like in the end we're going wide enough for now for Wrath, now for Ruin. Sad that we didn't get that second shadow summoning. Yeah, Imrahil is good, but obviously we're not playing it. I have a couple of rares I'm interested to play with in Battle of Bywater and... Uh, okay, another Protector isn't bad. And the Saga. 
I have a feeling the saga might just be bad, unfortunately. Yeah, is Shelob Shelob? I feel like it's Shelob, but I've heard other people say it other ways. <laughs> I think this and blue-black are both sort of vaguely defined um, archetypes. I think the other eight are more clearly defined than, than these, uh, those two. Let's see... Got some cuts to make. I don't know that I want more than one Esquire. I don't really think we do. Nimble Hobbit is not going to be good. We don't have enough food. So. Yeah, Blue Black is like a control deck that does some stuff with spells and also does, does some stuff with um, uh, a mass. But it's very, it's sort of murky. But back, blue black can often be that way since it's usually the best control color pair. It doesn't really need clearly defined. We have enough legendaries, I would say, for War of the Last Alliance. Um, well, maybe not. Do I only have four cards that are always legendary? Five. I have five. That's probably enough. Um,. Cavalier is certainly nothing special. I feel like ring tempting me is probably more useful than trading for orcs and stuff. I did a pretty good job of drafting things that don't die to Battle of Bywater, except we also have a bunch of things that pump things, so that might be a problem. <laughs> So we kind of have to run this. The one thing this deck definitely doesn't have enough of, I think, is removal. I mean, we've got the Sheriffs and Banish from Edoras, but the Sheriffs are kind of conditional and Eder battle from Edoras. Banish from Edoras is super inefficient, so don't love it. Um, I do think Errand Rider is going to be fine. So yeah, I think we probably cut one Esquire. We're not so good at going wide that it's going to be, like, insane. Oh, I also have Gollum. I wasn't counting that. Yeah, we have plenty of legendaries. Would I rather have two Westfold Riders? I think we probably cut one. Yeah. All right. I think this is the deck. I do think we want 17 lands in the end. Um, yeah. And I kind of think we do need eight swamps. I mean, nine planes, eight swamps is a fine separate, you know, fine uh, division. Okay. Let's see if I can overcome the first draft uh, in the early access event curse. You know, for a deck with this many two drops, not having any of them is a little bit frustrating, but uh, I think we kind of have to keep this hand. I mean, hopefully we draw one. That's not one. Haha, -ha, we did draw one. <laughs> Thank you for the sub, Eon Kalkos. The chances were pretty good. We had zero in our hand and like 10 in our deck. So, you know. <clears throat> so I think we just attack here and... Wait a second. Yeah. So he looks back at the beginning. So yeah. We're going to attack here and then play this and get a 1-1. I'm not going to have something to make into a ring bearer is the downside, but I think that's fine. They might just take it. If they just take it, I probably still play Denethor. Um, yeah, I'd rather play Denethor before this so we can hold on to our card. The only bummer is not leaving mana up for Denethor, but you know. Yeah... That is less than ideal. Kind of a funny combo I can do here. 
I can sack Took Reaper to this effect, play Samwise, get it back. Hmm. Makes him the ring bearer, which doesn't really do anything for us right now. But I can get to I can actually get to the second upgrade here. Yeah, I think that seems pretty good. I think we go. We're gonna make Denethor our ring bearer. So yeah, can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. Right now that doesn't matter. But then we do this. Get this back. I could switch ring bearers. Is that worth doing? Not really. I think Denethor is probably still better. And then we'll end our turn. We make a 1 1. I don't think Untapped is updated yet, for one thing. So I actually didn't bother opening it. <laughs> so. Lemboss. Yeah, right now... So next turn... Hmm. What do I want to do? Play another Vanguard? That's kind of an interesting attack. Um... I mean, I think if they want to kill Denethor here, I might just let them. Eh, probably not. Let's just play Landerval. Then we're going to attack with both of these. And Denethor. Give Denethor flying. Nice. We will discard a planes. So they can block, but like, you know, it doesn't upset me too much, especially because I get a 1-1 in my second main phase, so. They also get a 1-1, so it's kind of a wash. I guess white's a splash color. So they're probably pretty into a mass. All right, kill my flyer. Merkwood bats plus Denethor seems like a pretty nice combo. What is that? Um, well, I think we just attack with everything here. Probably going to discard the Reaper. Although, what's my next upgrade? Hmm. Not a bad one. Okay, well now we're just gonna discard a land. Although, I could play Merkwood Bats and Shadow Summoning here if I don't discard a land, yeah. Let's discard the Reaper that they already know we have. Yep, that's fine. So then we go Merkwood Bats. Shadow Summoning. We're going to get three tokens here at the end of this turn. They do gain back some life, of course, but... Nice. I've been holding on to this Errand Rider forever. It's going to be a little sad if they kill Denethor. Luckily, they do not. 
Tail. Let's play our Errand Rider now. We just get to draw a card straight up. So Denethor can only be blocked right now by these two, and I get to draw a card, so it's probably worth an attack here. Um, I think I'm actually going to discard one of these, because I can play Gollum and use this ability this turn. Well... Yeah, no, that that's that's pretty good. <clears throat> so we're going to play Gollum. Then we're going to do this, sack our human for free, effectively. Denethor's doing work. Yeah, they've got some big creatures. I'm just hoping I can make enough tokens to kill them before it matters. And I think we can, if they don't have removal. And they are down to one card. So again, these can't block Denethor because they're too big. So thinking about just swinging out here, seeing what happens. They're at seven. We've got four blockers. We've got one card in hand. Yeah, I think we just swing out. Yeah. Sacking our tokens is very effective right now. There's another one to, way to make one, too. Oh, that's true. My ring emblem is covered up in this current. Might have to move my camera. Yeah, that's fine if Gollum dies. Especially because we can sack tokens to it to do more damage. <clears throat> Yeah, that'll do it, pretty much. We're going to sack this token. They go to six, and then they go to five. Definitely would choose one of these tokens as a ring bearer now. But uh, yeah, then we could just cast Mordor Muster and that kills them. I mean, we could kill them any number of ways. Oh, they can actually make food here, huh? They don't have the mana to make it and sack it though. Yeah. Well, things lined up pretty well there. Yeah. Gonna have to find a new home for my uh our opponent never removing Denethor was their main problem. He's like an insane value engine, especially once we had Mirkwood Bats. It was just like, you know, that's that. <laughs> okay, looks pretty good. Playing something ahead of Rosie Cotton is nice because... Then you can put the counter somewhere. Yeah, I guess putting it over my opponent's pet makes sense. Would I rather play Westfold Rider? Have it become a 4-2... This, if I play it and my opponent kills it, I still have a 1-1 one, one, no matter what. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, the board's pretty cool.
I mean, if they spend removal on Easterling Vanguard, I feel pretty good about it. Um, you know, now buffing with Rosy Cotton is not the most exciting thing in the world. But I'd probably still do it. Oh, yeah, because then the token will get made, and then I can put a counter on the token. Yeah, that actually works out pretty well. I think it'll line up that way. Maybe it won't, though. Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> I think I would still attack this way either way, but... Oh, yeah. Rosie is a big problem. Nice. It does line up the way I wanted it to. It basically made it into a mass, too. So, it's going to be awkward here. I don't imagine I really want to play War of the Last Alliance. I can't imagine that's a good idea in this situation. Hey, we have a legendary creature. How about that? Um, I think I should just be pressuring our opponent more, and we definitely can. So, yeah. So... Let's attack with this 2-2. Two, two. Do I want to play Faramir? The thing about playing Faramir is I'm not going to get a counter or get to draw a card right now. So I'm less than thrilled about it. So I might play Westfold Rider. I don't know. Playing Faramir still seems pretty good. The thing about playing the Rider is I can leave Reprieve up. And basically blank their next turn. Yeah, okay, that sounds pretty good now that I put it that way. If I was going to draw a card off of this, it's the route I would go, but I'm not going to right now. So we'll just leave Reprieve up. Oh yeah, that's going to feel real good to hit with Reprieve. They spent their whole turn doing it and it basically didn't do anything. <laughs> okay. I could play Landraval here. That's probably the better thing to do. Because then I could just attack with everything and give Rosie Cotton flying. If they let my Westfold Rider live, I'm going to be able to destroy their Doors of Durin. So I don't know why they would, but I'll be happy if they do, I guess. Our first pick was Battle of Bywater. Yeah, they're going to kill it. I probably should have just given that flying and not attacked with Rosy Cotton, but this also doesn't do anything if they can't attack, and they can't attack. So, I'm not too broken up about it. Okay. So, we're going to attack with both of these. Hit them for five in the air. And I guess I'm just going to play Mirkwood Bats and Gollum Patient Plotter. Wait. Why didn't you give me the opportunity to play this? Oh, it's a food, not a treasure. <laughs> that explains it. <clears throat> so that reprieve was even better than I thought it was, because their only green source was that treasure. So the tempo was real. You know, lately they've been designing a lot of these sorts of cards so that they can do something the turn you play them, and they kind of have to. Um, oh, good. I'm loading.
Okay, so let's... Yeah, arena crashed. Hopefully we get back in time. I guess I must have lost my connection entirely. Let's see, do we get back in time? No. Oh, no, we did. We did, actually. Uh. Oh, no, we didn't. We missed a, a turn. We got that attack in, but then we missed our turn. I think I attack with everything here. Missing that turn may end up being a major problem. They tempted, got tempted by the ring's... Twice, huh? So we'll give Rosie Cotton flying. Yeah. I can cast Battle of Bywater now and have it be one sided. It might just be worth it to kill this creature. Um, I could also play Faramir and draw a card, but honestly, I think killing that thing and getting a bunch of food when we have Mirkwood Bats in play is probably worth doing. You can also play Gollum in the second main phase, so... Oh, I forgot about <laughs> all the buffing. That was even better than I thought it was. Gollum first would have resulted in a dead Gollum, so it wouldn't have given us another food. I can't emote because we got disconnected, I guess. So I'm sorry, opponent, but good game. <laughs> Pretty funny that, um, yeah. There was a turn where we didn't end up using any of our mana because of our disconnect. Yeah, people aren't really supposed to scoop, though. I don't blame them a ton. Like, especially after we did the thing that gave us all the value. So... Yeah, Battle of Bywater plus Mirkwood Bats is nuts. There's so many little combos. You know, I thought of some of them. But, um... Didn't think about that one. <laughs> didn't think about that one. The Denethor stuff I thought of, but... Yeah, I mean, I do think that applies more to Constructed, where people are trying to pull off silly combos than in Limited. But yeah, you are generally supposed to just play the game out. This is a very bad hand for obvious reasons. This one's much better. I think I probably just put the black card back. 
Well, it'd be nice to draw a swamp now. Probably just end up reprieving their three drop. Not the best start compared to what we've been able to do so far. Aaron Rider of Gondor might help us find a swamp. Nice. Or that will. So I think we have the time here, although am I greedy enough to wait to play Mirkwood Bats and then Shadow Summoning? <laughs> Maybe I am. Yeah. So let, we haven't seen our Shire Sheriffs yet, I just realized. We'll put a Plains back. Right now we don't have... Ooh, yeah, that's removal. Spicy. Hmm. So I could cast Shadow Summoning and then just zap this by giving up one of the tokens. And it will never come back. But I can also wait to do that till next turn. Maybe they'll amass even more. So let's just play our bats. Yeah, one thing in the movie that they don't spend much time on is like the part in the battle that the hobbits actually play that aren't in the Fellowship. And obviously they leaned pretty hard on that in this set. All right, so I think I'm gonna shadow summoning. Then play Shire Sheriff. These aren't the tokens I would ideally give up, but you know, it'll work. Um, yeah, we'll hit the patrol. The Sheriff is easy to kill, so they can get this back, obviously. Yep. Okay. We are definitely falling behind here. Um... Trying to decide if I want to play, just play Shire Sheriff here. Try to get back, make this race go a little more our way. You see if they have more removal. Or if I'd rather just play Protector of Gondor. I don't really think I want to play Landreval. Yeah, let's play the Protector. Drops them to 10. Yeah, our first two games went pretty much the way you would want them to other than a disconnect. But things were going so much our way that even though we missed using our mana one turn, we still won. So <laughs> this one not going nearly as well. We had to mulligan and such. So yeah, I'm probably going to end up taking out the army. But it's only at level one on the ring, so I'm not too concerned yet. So... I do think we probably chump here. Hmm. Maybe I just block both. There's a good chance they have a trick is the problem with blocking. So I think we just chump. The drafting was fun, yes. Gross. Okay. Well. 
That is unfortunately also an orc, so that's definitely going to have menace next turn, even if I get rid of the army. So if I play Shire Sheriff here, hit Snarling Warg. That doesn't seem too bad. I hit them for five, drop them to five. And they'll take one additional damage. Yeah, I think that's what we do and try to sneak in enough damage for lethal next turn. We're going to end up having to block with our Sheriff, but I think that's okay. It's going to be close. It's going to be close because we're going to have to block with our Sheriff here not to die. And if they have removal, we're just dead. But I think this was our best path. Because if we just get to block with our Sheriff, play Landreval, we swing for lethal next turn in the air. Although the fact they can make food complicates that. So maybe that wasn't wise. Yeah, I mean, if they leave up mana to make food, that's going to be very bad for us. And they're going to, obviously. Although, maybe not. Maybe they'll be brave. Or they'll kill our Merkwood bats, and then we're dead anyway. <laughs> or the Protector. Killing anything. Yeah, they left up mana for food, so we cannot win now. Unless they miss the fact that they can do it. Which is highly unlikely. There's no way for me to survive if they attack me here. So I may as well just hope that they've missed... Uh, that they can make food here. <laughs> wow, they did. Oh, no, they attacked with it. Never mind. Man, overthinking. Yeah, I can move my camera. Thank goodness they didn't leave up. Yeah, they had to attack to pressure us enough, so. I second-guessed my initial, um... <laughs> uh, what I was thinking I would do, like, four times, and then it ended up being correct. Yep, I would have attacked either way, but now I'm the deck icon, yeah. It's not perfect. The, uh, that's better. Yeah, that game we finally got to use our Shire Sheriffs. This is a good one. We've gotten to do lots of cool stuff between, um... Uh... Getting to do some combos, like, with our token nonsense and... Stuff. <laughs> yeah, so the problem with putting the camera here is that it covers the stack. So I don't know that it's perfect... It doesn't cover the ring, but I think maybe covering the stack is worse than covering the ring. I knew there was a reason. Because, you know, especially YouTube viewers might want to actually be able to read the cards that are on the stack. <laughs> um, so one could play Shire Sheriff here just to do it. But I think I'd rather do that with Samwise, for the most part. Down right corner is bad for YouTube because it covers the thumbnail logo thing. <laughs> so... Ooh. 
That's less than ideal. Gonna have to kill him in the near future. Um... Yeah, unfortunately he can block everything, so I don't know that it's even worth playing Samwise to get tempted by the ring here. Upright corner might work, but I knew there was a reason I didn't have it over on this right corner. It's just been a while. Yeah, lower right might actually be... Eh, that's a problem too. I don't know. Why'd they have to make an emblem a key part of a limited format? <laughs> so I think we play Protector of Gondor because it lets us set up our Shire Sheriff. Let me end our turn. Yeah, I think this will work out nicely. So we go Shire Sheriff. We hit Legolas. And then attack with both of these. Do I want to use Samwise the Stouthearted here just to get that back? Or do I want to leave up Reprieve? Leaving up Reprieve when they have an empty board seems better to me. And I could still leave up Samwise, but the window has closed to actually get our creature back. We'd love for them to try to... Yeah, that works. They didn't use all their mana, but I'll take it. So, I probably just attack with both here. Could play Gollum and leave up Samwise in case they have removal. Could play Mirkwood Bats. I think I go with the bats. Yeah, he may well have some large ends. And we haven't lowered their life that much. Legolas really slowed our roll. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if I underestimated the bats. I mean, I think it's Black's second or third best common, so... Okay. That's less than ideal. One green mana, huh? That means I'm supposed to block. So, I think we go ahead and just kill... Um, Legolas and attack for five here. Yeah. They trade Chance Met Elves for our Rider. I think we're perfectly happy with that. Works for me. Casting that when you only have one creature does not feel great, I can imagine.
I probably just flash Samwise in here. Because I'm going to use probably the mass pump effect. Yeah, so we'll just go ahead and cast Samwise. We will make Samwise the ring bearer. Um, three, five, six. I mean, we have lethal on board, so I don't actually need to use this. Yep, I moved the camera there because of the ring emblem. <laughs> But turns out it covers the stack as we learned in that game. Let's try up here, I guess. I think maybe covering the ring emblem is the less the least the lesser evil of them all. Definitely covering the stack is worse. We did cast the board sweeper once, but we just used it as a removal spell that killed one thing. So it wasn't exactly what you were looking for, but it felt pretty good, <laughs> especially because we had rosy cotton and Mirkwood bats in place. So we got a bunch of food and counters and did a bunch of damage. Good hand, we can curve out, although probably don't really want to play Shire Sheriff. Now we don't have to. I mean, we never had to, but you know what I mean. Put over the Karn Avatar, yeah. <laughs> it's not a terrible idea. <laughs> Thank you for the sub, gents. And <laughs> bounce around the screen. <laughs> uh. So yeah, we play Gollum. Yeah, I mean, we're just going to let this die. So basically what happened as a result of that exchange is a tempo advantage so far. <laughs> they killed a one mana thing for two mana. Are they going to play another Morgul knife wound? That would be a little annoying. I would think about holding on to it because I can eventually sack this and then bring it back with the ability later. Thank you for the follow, Drogamar. Yeah, I definitely saw the scene from The Office too. Mordor Trebuchet. Ooh, this is going to be good. So we can go Rosy Cotton, put a counter on Gollum. Attack with Gollum. We got so many good white uncommons in this deck. <laughs> white was just so open, especially in that first pack. Like the two Shire Sheriffs wrote... Rosie Cotton, Samwise, two, um, yeah, I mean, we just, we just got all the business. Um, do I bother with Shire Sheriff? I don't really think so. I think I probably just attack with Gollum here and see what happens. We want to hold on to this food for our Sheriff.
Um, I'm probably playing Mirkwood Bats next. Luckily, this doesn't have reach. They could have given it reach. Isolation at Orthonk. Okay. The ring tempts us. Not too bad for Rosy Cotton. So, Denethor will start getting to do some stuff. Although, we don't have a good sacrifice fodder right now. So, maybe not. So, she can be blocked by the Mordor Trebuchet, unfortunately. Um, I could kill the Trebuchet with my Sheriff. It's not the worst plan. I don't love it either, though. So... We'll just attack with Mirkwood Bats here. Play Denethor. Ooh, do they have the counter spell that's gonna tempt them with the ring? I think they do. Yep. Dang. That hurts. That does hurt. <sighs> Trying to decide if I want to play Shire Sheriff here. Make efficient use of my mana. Although, I mean, I know I'm going to draw Gollum next turn, so I could play both of them. Yeah, let's wait it out. Because I can't play Faramir and both of these. They get to loot here. Oh, yeah, they get to do that, too. Ouchies. Okay. Yeah, so let's do our let's hmm. More counter magic is pretty likely, I feel like. Let's try to play Gollum first. No, yeah, doesn't look like there's counter magic. Get rid of their ring bearer. So at least if it comes back, well, never mind. <laughs> the ring will tempt them again, so it works out pretty well for them. I don't have another token right now, sadly. Somebody's at level three on the ring. We haven't seen that one yet. Um, I guess we're going to shift to Mirkwood Bats, given the fact that Rosie Cotton's never attacking. Ooh, actually, they're at level four. I could use another token right about now. I think... Hmm. Well, we get to loot. So let's attack and loot. Okay, that's good. Um, I think I'm going to discard Gollum because I can get him back if I really want to. And we'll play Protector of Gondor, which drops him to eight. And then we put a counter somewhere. Um, I think we'll put it here. I could sack this token right away, uh, but I think keeping a token around for Shire Sheriff is probably better. So far, it feels pretty fun. I mean, winning helps, um, <laughs> but this deck has been pretty sweet. So I think we block with Protector of Gondor here. If they have a trick or whatever, then that's fine. Yeah, I mean, the bats... The bats are good. The ability is insane. 
Um, in a set with this many tokens, especially. All right, so they do, they do take that down. Do I just want to kill their trebuchet? I mean, I think so. Should I hold on to Rosy Cotton? Because I could just get back Gollum, sack Rosy Cotton. I mean, I probably don't. There's so many cards that make tokens in my deck that it doesn't seem like a great idea. So, spend five to kill that, drop him to four. I mean, that seems okay. It's not great. But, it's not bad either. Shutting her down isn't that great, because her ability is still active, although... Yeah, I mean, it's not that good. Um, hmm. The options. So they get back Mordor Trebuchet if I trade here. Obviously, that's less than ideal. Um, so I think I probably just play the Reaper here and leave up Reprieve. You still have a legendary creature, huh? So let's play our Errand Rider. Thank you for the follow, Jackernaut and Drogomar. Thank you for the sub, Jens. Hey, there's Battle of Bywater. Doesn't really do anything here, but there it is. So the bad news about this is I could reprieve it, but they can just cast it again. So it doesn't really seem worth it. Now they can just block two Reaper. Yeah, and we'll just leave up reprieve again. I probably just block Easterling Vanguard, especially... Oh, it's a human, at least. So we don't have to worry about... Um, hmm. Is Reprieve worth it here? I, again, don't really think so. I mean, I like the idea of drawing a card, but beyond that, I'm not that excited about it. Oh, yeah, I can't block anyway. That's true. That's true. So this isn't going to be good. We're going to get hit. It's going to do a ton of damage. We go to eight. We do get to reprieve this and actually do something. Okay. So... We're going to Mordor Muster. Put a counter there. <laughs> kind of thinking I might just play out both Shire Sheriffs here to have creatures, but I guess playing Faramir is probably a little better.
Battle um, of Bywater, just giving us a bunch of tokens, may end up being pretty valuable at some point. A bunch of counters slash tokens, that is. So we will block. Right now, Battle of Bywater doesn't affect them at all, which is less than ideal. However, this means I'll draw a card in my second main phase. Do I play out the other one? I think so. Because, mm, no, because I could battle of Bywater and then shot. Yeah, I think we'll hold on to it. We get to draw a card. So if Gollum dies here, I do make a 1-1 one, one token. Um, because when Gollum dies, the ring tempts me. They can do a bunch of damage here because they're going to, if they attack with this, they get a 2-1 flyer. So they can drop us to 3 Potentially. Makes sense to only attack for two, though. There they go. Yeah, I think I think that's what they want to do. So I want to block with Gollum because it means I'll get a 1-1, one, one, which means I get a counter. But that's probably dumb. This is probably just better. I have a feeling that they're going to beat us here, unfortunately, for me. So I could battle a Bywater, but it will kill these two. So that's not... Great. I guess I could attack with them first, then Shire Sheriff. Yeah, that's not awful. So the ring tempts us, that means we get a 1-1. One, one, which means we get a counter. So now the question is... Do I Battle of Bywater? Because it will kill Faramir. And right now Faramir is going to draw me a card. I guess I have... Two, because I'm gonna have to kill. I have to kill something here, or I'm dead in the air. So I don't really have a choice. What I could do is sack one of these first, because yeah, we don't want to sack Rosie because of the counters. All right, so I think we actually do this. Ooh, making this a three-three was bad. God, I'm dumb. Yeah, making that a three-three now means it's going to die. So, I think I actually want to do this. Yeah, the question is, do I hit the army or do I hit the 2-1? I think I hit the 2-1. Yeah. Yeah. And then we leave our mana up. I could use Gollum's ability, but I don't think I do. Nice. I hope they draw something expensive that I can just cast Reprieve on. If that happens, I think we're going to get there. Okay, well, 
Let's play Laundraval. Uh, and... Yeah, we got there. Yeah, up here it still doesn't work because it blocks the top of the thing. So I think... I think the camera got, has to go back where it was. Um, okay. All right, this is fine. I'd like some white mana, but... Nice. I guess maybe there's like a sweet spot. Yeah, I think we'll play Easterling Vanguard here. Yeah, maybe I can move it even higher. Ooh, what? Ah, because they played Mahor. Dang. The only good news is soon that'll be big enough to die to uh, the Battle of Bywater. But the bad news is pretty bad. I'm trying to decide if it's worth a double block here. They only have one colorless mana up. So it really might be. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We'll just let them kill both of those. We get to hold on to a 1-1, so it's not... the worst... The bad news is these two together are nuts, so <laughs> I have that card that lets me destroy enchantments somewhere. I could have just let it keep growing until my Battle of Bywater killed it. Yeah, I'm not loving this. But hopefully they play some more things that die to the battle. We didn't have double white at the time I made that double that double block, but Yeah, we'll take 4 from Gimli. Hmm. Well, I'm going to pass the turn again. I guess it was already big enough to die, incidentally, to our battle by water. We will block that. So we go down to nine. Okay. Now Battle of Bywater looks pretty good. And now we have food to get us back in the race. That's sad. I'm gonna go ahead and sack of food while I can. Getting Reprieve at this stage of the game is not great. I was hoping it'd be a little better, but we've seen it be kind of medium a few times now. I'm going to hold on to this food because we know we have enough payoffs for it and I have a million mana anyway. So, hey, look at that. <laughs> like I said. Hopefully the removal they have is expensive enough that I can just cast Reprieve.
if they have removal, maybe they don't have removal at all. You know? Hmm. Well, trying to decide if Reprieve is worth it here. It's probably not, unfortunately. They have enough mana left over that decent chance they can do something. Yeah, I'd rather Reprieve that. Nice. All right, so let's attack with our Reaper here. And then we'll play Faramir, Gollum. They can attack, yeah, and hit us in the air. That's what they do. Ooh. It's still dead, so I'm not too alarmed. But that is a little alarming. Um, is getting Gollum really that big of an upgrade? <laughs> not really. I'm just going to pass. There we go. Um, okay, so let's do this. Sack that. Get tempted by the ring. We don't have a ring bearer right now, but we will. And we can play Gollum. And we can play Samwise. Pretty good value turn here. Get back the Reaper. And... The annoying thing is how good this trebuchet is against all our ring bearers. Um, I guess I'll do it here because if they kill this, I get to make another ring bearer anyway. Yeah, that's not good. I can live with it, but... They can attack and then hit us for two in the air. I have to block, obviously. And I guess it's going to be Gollum. Eh. Let's block with the Reaper, actually. We go to three. I'm going to switch to Samwise. Dang. <laughs> this is a really close game like our last one. Um, unfortunately... Hey, they have a Golem too. Okay. Do I just kill Mordor Trebuchet here? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I'll block your golem with my golem. So now at least this has death touch. I mean, I can attack, oh, or I'll just draw that. That works. Then we can attack and loot. Drop them to two. Hey, look, we're going to play War of the Last Alliance finally. Oh, they're dead, actually. <laughs> I forgot about the three damage. Nice. Nice. 
somehow we're six and zero. Oh. I mean, our deck is really good, but anytime you go six and zero, oh. the last two games were close. Yeah, I have a feeling where the last alliance is just bad. Like, I just don't think we end up in that many situations where we can just like hang back and spend that much time on it. Sand's okay. I had a pretty good feeling about it too, but I've done so poorly on my very first draft in so many formats that I, I had my doubts. Hmm. Yeah, we'll play Denethor. Doesn't really seem like it's a great idea to attack here, I don't feel like. Um, too much could go wrong. Wonder whether they have counter magic. Either way, I think we try to cast Protector of Gondor here. That is not counter magic. I do love that card a lot. The scry deck and the spell deck, you know, those blue, green, and blue, red are usually decks I love, so. This was one I was really interested in playing, though, the black, white deck, and. Yeah. Well, we're gonna attack now. Thanks to Reprieve. I'm less concerned. So you're gonna play Hithlay and Knots, yeah. I think we'll go ahead and reprieve that. And play Westfold Rider. Yeah, kill Westfold Rider. So this is a nice, gonna be a nice combo. Um, okay. So let's attack with Denethor. And let's play Faramir. And let's sack this. So we drain one, and then we're going to draw a card. Get back a 1-1. One, one. This deck looks how I expected it to. If lay in knots and various... Um... Yeah, when they cast a lay in knots, they're actually going to get to draw a car additional card, too, which is gross. Luckily, I can exile that. But, yeah, I mean, it's... That's interesting. So there's the one blue mana, minus three, minus zero, a mass one, and that's got to be what they have. Like, there's... There's no other explanation. <laughs> so we're not going to block. Okay. I have some different paths I can take here now. Um, okay. So I think we probably just kill Willow Wind with Shire Sheriff here. Hang on to Banish. We're going to get the token back with uh, Denethor, too. The counter, that is. The counter. No, token was right. That was right the first time. Um, so minus three, minus zero, a mass one isn't nearly as scary when we're attacking them. So I'm going to attack them. Yeah, in this deck, it's been very easy. Yeah, it is what I thought it was. It's been very easy to um, set that stuff up. So it has almost felt like a two-mana Fiend Hunter, as you say. Uh, 
Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and play our land. And then we get a 1-1 one, one back. And we draw a card. <laughs> this deck has all kinds of engines in it, and that is, like, the best thing. So, um, we are going to block this. Then I think I'm just going to sack it to Denethor's ability. Black-white is not usually like an engine color pair, but it definitely is here. So Hithlean Knots is about to be annoying. But that's okay. This is a very clunky sorcery, so I may just end up using it on their army. I don't think I'm going to, though. Nah. I think we just take three... Gollum. Do I want to sacrifice something? Doesn't really feel like it's a great plan. Um, one, two, three, four. We can get pretty close to doing lethal in the near future. The only thing about sacking is I get, I get a 1-1 one, one and I draw a card. So maybe it's worth it. It's probably worth it. Oh yeah, the ring tempts me too. I sort of forgot about that. So I'll get two one ones this turn. How about that? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that is better. And then I can just get Gollum back. Yeah. Speaking of engines... <laughs> They're going to start trying to mill me out, I guess. Ooh. He's got Storm of Saruman. I think we're going to win on our next turn, unless... Well, they might be able to kill Denethor, I guess. They decided not to mill. What advantage is there in not milling? Concerned I have graveyard nonsense, maybe? Okay. Well. That makes life easier, so. Shire Sheriff, sack a human soldier, get rid of the army, attack with everything. I could also kill something else with Banish from Eteris. 
Edoras, Adorus. So the question is, I mean, I think leaving up mana for Denethor's ability is probably better. I'm going to leave this Shire Sheriff back. So I'm going to sack Gollum. Um, all right, so I think that's going to buy them a little bit of time, unfortunately. But... We're still in okay shape, thanks to the one ones we're making and stuff. We're gonna go to four here. I have five mana, so. They go to three. I guess if I had one more mana, I'd be able to get there on the sack effects. Um, all right, so let's get Gollum back. Milling himself. Oh, if they have Gandalf Sanction... That might be spicy. They might be able to kill me. I have one in the graveyard. It's doing eight. <laughs> so they could kill a 1-1 one, one and do seven to us right now. And <laughs> yeah, we might be about to die to Gandalf Sanction. I can gain one life at instant speed, which might save me. But with Erebor Flamesmith in play, that's a little less likely. It's definitely Gandalf Sanction that he's trying to power up. I don't know why else they would mill themselves. In blue black. Blue red, rather. Blue black, there's more reasons to mill yourself. Ooh. That's pretty spicy. So that's going to kill a bunch of stuff. Okay, that'll kill all my 1-1s, one -ones, X-1s. So, might as well sack one. We do get a 1-1 one -one in the aftermath, which helps. Thank you, Faramir. <laughs> They are at two. So I think we're just going to do this. Yeah, we got there. Those last like three games were all very close ones, but we managed to eke them all out to go 7 0. That's a good first draft. Yeah, we got so many good white uncommons. White was just wildly open. Uh, and we ended up with. An amazing deck that you know we also we also had pretty good luck across the board that always that's usually a factor when you go seven and oh so but yeah lots of token combo stuff that just came together <laughs> 